no, 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 no. You weren't supposed to go up there. Alright. Oh. Upon entering the chamber where the vanquished ward stone resides, the crusaders could have expected many things, an ambush, deadly spells, or horde of enemies, but not an empty hall, still and silent, with no mango or henchmen, only the obelisk and glimmers of light dancing on the dirty floor. But then again, all is not as placid as it seems. Helgia once again hears the seething choir. This time the voices sound louder, more insistent. One step, another, and suddenly hails, yeah, sees the ward stone, not as it was a moment ago, but somehow completely different. It is no monolith, emanating light. It is a cage made of pure energy. The place where Descari struck looks like festering wound from which tendrils of dirty red and purple darkness creep throughout the entire artifact. And there, inside, two hosts of flaming warriors are locked in, ba locked in battle. One is light, the other blood red, but they are all waiting for what? Hearken to the light warrior's words. The light warriors speak of duty, service, and sacrifice made. The words reveal the truth of the ward stones. Each one contains a host of angels, volunteers from heaven, who committed to this indefinite imprisonment in order to guard mortal kind from the demonic threat. They make no complaint. They ask no easing of the burden. If the goddess and her herald offered them the same choice again, they would consider it the ultimate honor to sacrifice their freedom for the cause. The angels, now Descari's evil plan. No, Descari's evil plan. When the last of the light warriors falls, the ward stone will become a deadly explosive that will destroy everything around it, and the other obelisks in the chain will meet the same fate. The light warriors pray for help. They plead for someone to strike down their fallen brethren. Those who succumb to the demonic corruption are already beyond salvation, but if they are stopped, it will allow the warstone to heal and the light host to continue its duty. The crystal chisel discovered in the ruins of Kinnabras is the ideal weapon for the task. It will cut out the corruption along with those who have succumbed to it and restore the warstone's full power. The eyes of the Aeon, until now slumbering peacefully, and the hero soul awakens. They urge the hero to look upon the war stone through them. The Aeons wish to see. Look on the angels with the Aeon's eyes. The eyes of the Aeon pierce through essence, matter, and time, and reveal the truth of the war stone. The stones are just as much a perversion of the world wound itself. The demons are not of this plane, but this did not give Iomade and her herald license to disrupt the balance still further. By imprisoning untold numbers of angels in stone, the crime committed in the name of good does not offset those committed in the name of evil. It only multiplies the harm done to the cosmic order. It's awfully lawful of them. I'm not sure I... The Red Warriors speak of pain and lies and disillusionment. Their words reveal the truth of the War Stone. The barrier surrounding the world wound is built on the bondage and suffering of countless angels. Every injury dealt by the War Stone, these angels experience as physical agony. The pain is driving them insane, deceived by the hollow platitudes about duty and service. They suffer torment day after day for the sake of ungrateful mortals who do not even know their names. Enough. 
The Red Warriors know that their blades, now turned against their former brother, hasten the triumph of Discari and his servants. Once the war swords have been wholly conquered by corruption, it will become a deadly weapon under the demon's control. Some of the obelisk prisoners beg for freedom while others pray for only death, but they all agree that this existence is unendurable. The crystal chisel discovered in the ruins Kinneros is the perfect Baby. is a perfect weapon for a massacre. It cannot force open the door for those who wish to escape, but it can destroy the wardstone along with its prisoners, willing and unwilling. None will be able to claim victory, but all will be gifted a merciful death that will end their suffering once and for all. Make a decision. Oh my god. Okay. Um, I can quell the anger of the Red Warriors by offering them peace. I can cleanse the Wardstone, destroying the fallen Celestials. Well, I'm going to be good, Angel. I'm not going to be lawful. I, I've, I don't even know. I'll quell the anger of the Red Warriors by offering them peace. Hail Jia addresses the furious Red Warriors, not in words, but in his intentions and aspiration. The torment-wearied angels see compassion in him, and also a promise of rest. One day the demons will be driven back. One day the world wound will vanish, like a nightmare chased away by the spring dawn. One day the sky above Kinnabras will once again gleam a dazzling blue. When that day comes, the Wardstones will no longer be needed, and the Angel's watch will be at an end. Overcome by this vision, the Red Warriors drop their weapons. With bowed heads, they say words of farewell and fall into a deep sleep, one that will not be broken until this day, the day this promise is fulfilled, and they regain their freedom. The injury inflicted by Discari still gleams scarlet within the Wardstone, but the spread of corruption has been halted. The obelisk fills with vital, healing light. The Crusaders succeeded. The Angel's battle within the Wardstone has ended, and the threat of the entire chain of stones has been eliminated. Of course, this is one no guarantee of safety for the future. What happened here can happen again. The Mendavians can no longer rely on Iomade's gift as once they did, but the dangerous pass for now. And un unable to bear such a flagrant violation of the laws of reality, the magical eyes of the Eon fade away for good. Look at them. Suture, they rejoice like children. The storm is coming and none of them sees it. Shall we add to their festivities, milady? How about a little lightning to burn their flesh? Oh no, Suture. We'll leave the frolics to discourage little gnats. We are here for something else, something I have greatly anticipated for a long, long time.
Is that freaking me? Is that me? The blistering, vivid memory releases you and you return from the depths of the past to the present. You feel a fresh breeze on your face. The energy expelled from the war stone has blown the roof off the great garrison. The war stone's energy suffuses you and through you flows into your allies. Oh, what is it? It tickles. What? What are you doing here? How? How did Miango get here? She doesn't rush into the chamber. She has been here the whole time, but some unknown spell has stopped you and your enemies from seeing each other. Ah, uh, I see. Tricks from your pathetic goddess. <laughs> so even Ioma Day will resort to dirty tricks when you have when you have her concern cornered. Don't celebrate yet, mortal. There's no one to hide you from me now. Triumph flares up in Nango's eyes. Look, you've already wounded, pathetic mortal. I I have no trouble finishing you off now. Looking down, you notice that the wound on, on your chest has opened up again and is bleeding as if you were hit by a sword, but there is no pain. All you feel is power filling you. Right before your eyes, the edges of the wound start to join and heal until it closes fully. Minago stares at you with an expression of displeased surprise. You'll die anyway. Um... The demoness looks formidable with her entourage around her, but her threats ring hollow to you now. You look at her and feel like a titan, titan, looking at an ant. Overwhelming, all-conquering power fills you. What that, de what that little demoness, those irritating hordes of the abyss, the gods themselves are your only equals now. Trevor, did you try yourself out? Uh, okay. Oh, now we're gonna have some fun. Well, fun for me. I don't know about you. I'm kind of neutral good, but I like Kayla now. I will vanquish evil. Do a little chaotic this time. We'll see who's having more fun when I've got my claws in you. Your goddess sent you to die. You think that's a victory? All you've done is postpone the deaths of all other mortals. And not even for very long. But your wait for death is over. You won't see what I'm going to do to your little friends because. I'm going to kill you right now. Can we retreat already? Tell me to die. Alright. Alright. Um You You wanna Small monster right there. You time to share your treasures. Yep. Where's your enlarged person?
Oh my god. That went so much faster. <laughs> That was ridiculous. To me. Yes, yes. Boom. Sean, don't do this. You still have a chance. What? What? When you say, I can't do the Azada quest now, because I didn't even see the... I, I wasn't allowed to go out of anywhere. Because it everything else except finding the, the, the lady who could sing, which I couldn't find her, I didn't know where she was. Well, we'll have to see. She doesn't love you. dialogue everyone counts on me all right I don't think there's anything good in here right Okay. Well, one that that went a lot faster. <laughs> sure. Tell me where they are. The the uh, the singing people. If you know where they are at, tell me where they are at. I will be happy with that. is in the mansion. <gasps> really? Make way, warrior queen coming through with a round for the heroes. When if it reaches the long table party, the heart is packed and you consider the next thing this. Ah. I did consider it and I am still considering it. Wait a minute. I talked to a bunch of people there. I'm not sure we didn't do a singing song thing. Okay. I did consider it, and I'm still considering it. People will, people deserve to celebrate. Helja deserves to be honored for saving the city and possibly Mindev. That was one hell of a fight. One hell of a fight calls for one hell of a party. According to the watch, there's no demon. There's been no demon activity. Okay. Yeah, I may have. I may have to redo that over. Uh, off stream just to get to the Zada thing. Okay. Uh, uh, breathe on the stone. We need all the luck we get. Nice. I'll put it on display at home. <laughs> Where it is a pendant. What are you on about now? Okay, okay, okay. All right. Queen Galfrey. Oh, hi, Queenie. Uh, oh, to asylum. Elysium. Okay. I'm sure you find and raises her eyebrows. Okay. 
Uh, your Highness. Yes, it's me. I made the journey here to deduct the cost of repairing the garrison roof from your salary. The woman r rises from her seat, approaches you, and holds out her hand. We have not been introduced. Uh, well, I guess I should do the lawful thing here. And for me, curiosity sparkles in the queen's eye. She openly appraises, uh, appraises you. So this is what he looks like. The one all Mendev is talking about. News of your deeds reached me even before my messengers could. Your Highness, we were just... I'll have them arrange. Calm yourself, Commander. I'll, I deliberately came here without any fanfare because I did not wish to draw attention away from our honored hero here. My personal guard and force I brought with me. Cool. All right. I'll have to. I'll, I may just have to go back and do that whole thing then. Will you join our celebration, Your Highness? Please don't, Your Highness. Highness, me. We are in a tavern, not my court. Near. <laughs> Address me as you would any comrade in arms. Uh, concerning the celebration, as you can see, I already invited myself. I could pass up. Couldn't pass up the chance to meet the new hair all the Crusaders are talking about. And soon, not just Crusaders. Uh, we all need to get some rest. Because grand new deeds lie ahead, yes. Your Highness, my dear cousin. Count, I admit I was surprised to learn of your valiantly joined the ranks of the city's defenders. Pleasantly surprised. Uh... <clears throat> I live to please you, my queen. My first thought when Daskari cruelly robbed us of noble Trendelev and half of Kinnebras crusaders in one fell swoop was of you, my queen, and how these events would highly weigh heavily on you. No one could have foreseen the demon attack, and we have so successfully held the defense here. I'm going to drown him in the nearest well this very night, <laughs> Beth Butters. <laughs> I value your dedication and your eloquence. The queen gives him a genuine smile. I hope you will continue to aid our soldiers. Not a chance. You know I am not made of front lines. Hells yeah, excellent bash, but alas, I really must go. Important matters to be getting on with. A new shipment of wine from Kianen. Uh, and three beautiful creatures from, from of the same province, but I will most surely come. All right, I shall hold you to that count, and now allow me to devote some time to the hero of the evening. Uh, to give you a chance to celebrate, but all seriously, discussions, official announcements can wait until tomorrow. I have big plans for you all, uh, especially for you, Hells Yeah, but I want to keep you in suspense for a little while longer. So I shan't say another word. Let us mark this victory. My first toast is to you, the hero of Ginebras. Now, what are we drinking? Okay. The fires of Canabras have died down. Now the army's path leads to the walls of Dresden, a fallen citadel that the Crusaders have been trying in vain to reclaim for 70 years. The new piece on the board might give their efforts some added momentum. Okay. Now, here's what I'm going to do. My, my plan is to go see if I can find the girl. And if I can't. And if it's all... Nope. Okay. So we're, we're out of that. So I'm going to have to go back and redo that whole thing. Right? Not a problem, not a problem. Yeah, 
Yeah, if I can't, then then I will I will uh, I will definitely definitely uh, go back and redo that part of it for sure. The Fifth Crusade. The forces. I am going to be the one to lead the forces. Knight Commander of the First Crusade, your leader from now on. On to victory or death. Huzzah! Huzzah! And I say again, huzzah! <laughs> Please allow me to join you while I inspect our cabinet. Okay. Mythic hero. Oh, I'm just a mythic hero right now, right? First ascension. Mythic ability. Odd uh, mythic rank thereafter. Select a new mythic ability. Okay. What? Your mythic powers allow you to bypass damage reduction. At first tier, hard to kill. First ascension. Bit of fun. They draw the power from chaos. From the abyss. From the heavens. Macabre. Law. Freedom. Unstoppable. Huh. Your strikes make cracks in the, in the enemy exists, leaving weak points for your allies to strike. Every time you hit a target in melee combat, you leave a mark on it. An ally attacking the marked target gets industrial divine damage of 1d6. That's pretty good. Huh. No, I'm not ranged. Your attacks are now less affected by luck. You don't automate when you hit, miss, when it casting. The creatures you summon don't summon best jokes. No. Boundless healing. No, I'm not a healer. That would be a ma uh, that'd be defensive. You found a way to use your perception and knowledge to better defend yourself. Your study target ability gives you a bonus to AC against the target of your study target ability. Uh, 
unstoppable. Anytime you would become paralyzed, the bigger they are. Powerful shadows. You learn to utilize real power of the shadows. Shadow spells, mythic charge. Her charge carries weight. Limitless range, rage. Last stand. Holy crap. So up to 10d6, right. So if I do the, the, which one was that? Leading strike. Every time you hit a target in melee combat, you leave a mark on it. And all attacking, any ally attacking the mark target deals additional divine damage equal to 1d6 per mythic rank. Which would be amazing. I think that's the only one that I, I that really goes with me because I don't have. Yeah, I'm thinking that's the one. Okay. 